top headlines that we are tracking on Power Breakfast today. I'm Sonal Bhutra and this is coming to you from the Mumbai News Centre. A lot that is happening in the global markets ahead of the Fed's decision. Most of the markets are reacting. So let's take a look at that and start with what is happening in the Asian markets. Uh, the Hang Seng has reversed a lot of its gains that it saw yesterday. So it's down two tenths of a percent. Hang Seng is up one, one tenth of a percent as we speak. So it's a largely mixed picture in the Asian markets. We have Nikkei which is sitting with cuts right now. Shanghai too down one tenth of a percent. And there is Straits Times as well which is lower as we speak. It's only Kospi and the Taiwanese index which are so showing some green as we speak and SJX Nifty as a result of which is indicating that the start for our own markets could be absolutely flat. It is uh, down 15 points right now, flat with some negative bias. So we'll have to see which way things go but still above that 18,200 mark is what the SJX Nifty is indicating after that stellar rally that we saw in last two trading sessions. Let's see whether we continue the momentum or not because the big cue of course is the Fed's rate decision later tonight. So let's talk about that and the US markets. Key indices ended in the red with the Dow Jones closing 0.2% lower, the S&P ending down nearly half a percent, the tech heavy Nasdaq fell harder, finishing nearly 1% lower. CNBC Sarah Eisen gets the wrap of all the action on Wall Street. Here on Wall Street, stocks slipped as job openings rebounded to almost 11 million in September. That unexpected labor market strength dampened hopes that the Federal Reserve may be nearing the end of its series of big interest rate hikes designed to counter inflation. Central bank decision makers are expected to announce another substantial increase tomorrow to slow the economy. The Dow finishing down a quarter of 1 percent, the S&P 500 dropping four tenths of 1 percent, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq underperforming again down nine tenths of 1 percent. Elon Musk starting to reveal some of his plans for Twitter. Today, in a tweet, of course, he said it's time to end what he called the platform's current lords and peasants system, for who gets a blue check mark to verify their identity. He wants to include it in an $8 a month subscription, along with priority and replies, mentions and search, and a 50% reduction in ads. That's the action from the U.S. market. Back to you in Mumbai. Okay, all right, that's the U.S. market update. Let's move on to the keenly watched Fed policy decision due tonight. CNBC's latest Fed survey shows respondents expect a pivot to 50 basis points by the end of this year. CNBC's Steve Leesman filed this report. The Fed's going to have to come up with either a new idea for, for what's going on in the job market, which I've maintained for a long time is kind of disconnected from what's happening with the funds rate and attempts to slow the economy because we're still putting people back to work. The Fed's going to have to rethink this outlook on jobs or it's going to have to concede to it. And the outlook is it's going to have to do more. And that's, I think, what the market is uh, is glomming onto here. Uh, when you look at our Fed survey, the only pivot they see, and I don't know how excited you want to get about this pivot, is from 75 down to 50 next month uh, in the December uh, meeting. Uh, but they still see the Fed going all the way up to 483 on uh, for a peak funds rate in March, which is a little earlier than the futures market is priced in. But there's the uh, that last line is probably the most important at this point, which is that they see the Fed maintaining that peak rate for up to 10 months. So you don't really get a real pivot, which is sort of rate cut until the end of next year. Um, and, and I don't know. I feel like the market's been really excited about this idea of pivoting from 75 to 50. I'm less excited by that because I still think the trajectory until the Federal Reserve gets some control on inflation, some sense of slack developing in the economy, I think the trajectory on rates is still up and higher. Okay, all right. That's all the expectations that we have from the Fed meet tonight. Let's also listen into some important voices speaking ahead of the FOMC meet and the policy decisions taken by Fed. Here's what we think the, the problem is. First of all, we don't think the bear market's over, okay? However, we don't think we're going to get enough capitulation on 2023 estimates to take us to new lows, meaning below 3,500. We did a lot of good work in September going into earnings season, much like in the second quarter. So now we're getting reprieve on that. Now the Fed situation clouds it even further because, look, we know we're closer to the end than the beginning. We don't think that there's going to be a giant pivot tomorrow, but markets have a way of getting in front of that, right? Just like, just like last year, right? The market started to price in a more hawkish Fed in January, and that kind of persisted all year. Well, eventually the Fed will pivot. Eventually they will stop raising rates. We don't think that's tomorrow necessarily. Maybe it is. Maybe they'll tell us that. But we think the market will get in front of that. He's going to uh, probably stay hawkish. Uh, he still has an inflation problem. There's been some signs of uh, a peak in inflation, but nothing definitive 
showing that uh, they're making a great deal of progress in bringing inflation down. So I think he's going to uh, indicate that uh, there will be another 75 basis point increase uh, in December after they do 75 basis points tomorrow. The Fed funds rate is in restrictive territory now and that they're just going to keep it there for a while to see how it impacts the economy. After all, we're talking about 450 basis point increase in the fund federal funds rates just since March in 10 months. And so I think they do need to, I think it's just a prudent thing to do to give it a rest and see how it plays out. The market this year has traded entirely as a function of rate market. Uh, as basically rates have risen, the equity market valuation has come down from like 21 times earnings the start of the year to around 16 times or so today. We have not yet seen any degradation, meaningful degradation, in the expected level of profits, if you look out between now and, uh, and sort of the uh, end of next year, 2023. I think the risk is that earnings come down. And in a hard landing scenario, you can see earnings fall perhaps 11 percent. Uh, our baseline forecast, which is not a recession, but you have the slowing economy, is maybe earnings grow modestly, very modestly, maybe 3 percent. And I think that is the key message that the idea of the uh, forecast and the direction of the equity market between now and the end of uh, this year and next year is really a function of earnings. Okay, that is some expert opinion coming in. It's time to get you the final update on our global market wrap this morning. European markets ended Tuesday's trading session higher with the French CAC up 60 points, the German DAX up 85 points and the British FTSE closing 1.5% higher. This even as inflation in the Eurozone region hit a record high of 10.7% in October, way higher than the estimated 10.2%. Meanwhile, the Bank of England saw strong demand from investors at its first auction to sell government bonds worth £750 million pounds from its quantitative easing stockpile. The Bank of England aims to gild uh, worth £6 billion pounds in eight auctions in November and December as part of its plan to reduce its bond holdings by £80 billion pounds over 12 months. All right, that's the global market action. Let's uh, get in our researchers who will tell us what will this mean for our own markets as well. We have uh, Vivek, uh, Nigel and Surbhi joining us now. Hey guys, a very good morning to all of you. Vivek, coming up to you first, uh, what is the market setup looking like today? Well, good morning. You know, as you mentioned, all eyes today will be on the outcome of the FMC meet. You know, for the 75 basis point hike is what the market is looking at. Uh, most uh, U.S. markets, uh, you know, as you mentioned, ended the day lower on the back of a strong U.S. GDP, uh, uh, strong U.S. jobs data. And again, this is something that actually ensured that uh, the Fed commentary, again, may not be too conducive as far as equity markets are concerned. European markets ended higher. When you're talking about gold prices, gold prices, again, moved up a uh, little up around half a percent but the key mover yesterday was actually the as far as the oil markets were concerned you actually saw significant moves there two percent higher as far as wti futures were concerned on the back of uh, uh, hopes of uh, china reopening and also brent futures also ended up higher by almost 1.9 percent coming closer home uh, the rbi FO, rbi policy meet outcome and the commentary there is something that is being tracked very closely as far as market participants are concerned. Key earnings today include Dalmia Bharat, Mahindra and Mahindra Financial as well as Adani Transmission. Uh, when you're talking about uh, the weak or very muted global queues, you know, Asian markets too are following suit, very muted opening as far as Asian markets are concerned and LGX Nifty 2 is indicating a muted and slightly gap down opening for the Indian markets. Okay, all right. Uh, that is what we're expecting in terms of our market moves today. Moving on now, going across to Surbi, who will list out all the stocks to watch out for in today's trading session. A few stocks that are on my radar today. The first one is Adani Ports, where the revenues have grown 33%. EBITDA has grown 14% on a year-on-year -year basis. The margins have come in at 56% versus 65% same time last year. Next is Tech Mahindra, where revenues and margins are pretty much in line with estimates. The dollar revenue is up 0.37%. EBITDA margins have come in at 11.4% and PAT is up nearly 14%. Next is LIC Housing Finance, where the net interest income declines 28% sequentially and the gross NPA is up 1.35%. Chola Mandalam Investment, the disbursals are up 10% sequentially and the AUM is up 6%. Lastly, Walters, where the revenues have come in pretty much in line with the CNBC TV18 poll. EBITDA is lower than the poll at 71 crores versus a poll of 114 crores and margins have come in at 4.1% few auto names will also be on our radar today because of their October sales numbers. Hego Motor Corp, the total sales are down 17% on a year-on-year -year basis and the export sales are down 42% on a year-on-year -year basis. 
Aisha Motors Royal Enfield sales are up 86% on a year on year basis and lastly TVS Motors where the sales are up 2.2% uh, 2, uh, 2 on a year on year basis. Okay, all right, that's a long list. So, B, thanks a lot for joining us with all those details. And finally, let's go across to Nigel, joining in with all the cues from the FNO space. Hey, Nigel. Well, morning, Sonali. You know, the FIs, they surprised us when they were selling lock, stock and barrel. And now, in fact, it seems they're showing us the big money. So, that's pretty encouraging because yesterday as well, they pumped in money, even if you take into account the large trades that we saw. The indices yesterday, well, the Nifty ended higher, but the... India VIX as well perked up a little bit. Remember, we're getting to a big event, so IVs on both the calls as well as on the put side did see a bit of a bump up. But there was long addition yesterday, and that was evident because the premium on the Nifty futures moved to around 65 points from around 40 points odd. And that's perfectly tying up with what the FIs did in the FNO market. Well, in the index futures itself, they added close to 13,000 long contracts in the ratio of six longs for one shot. And now, in fact, the long positioning is added on 66%. But on the option side, you didn't get any direction, whether it was with regard to the buying side or even on the writing side of things, pretty much even Stevens out there. So let's look at the options data a little bit more closely then. The 18,100 put and the 18,000 uh, uh, put, both of them together, they added more than a crore shares. And there were signs of writing being seen out there. So that's telling you that the base of the market could have moved up a little bit in the near term to around the 17,900 dot mark, just plugging in the numbers from both those two strikes. But on the upside, the 18,100 call, well, the premium's around 120 rupees or so. My guess is that there is some writing out here. So that 18,300-odd level, 18,250, 18,300-odd, that's where we could see some bit of supply and some bit of resistance that's coming in there. The broadband you have, 17,900 on the downside, 18,300 on the upside. I'll tell you what, ahead of a big event, if you want to take some money off the table, you've made some money on the index trade, well, I think that would be a prudent strategy as well. For starters, SGX is suggesting a mild red tick. Back to you. A mild red tick, Nigel, uh, Vivek and Sirbi. Thank you so much for joining us and taking us through that. Tune into Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Let's talk about some important earnings now. Tech Mahindra reported its second quarter numbers post market hours yesterday. Reema is joining us to tell us more. Uh, Reema, how were the numbers? Well, largely in line with street expectations, the companies reported a constant currency revenue growth of 2.9% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Margins expanded by 40 basis points to 11.4%. So they absorbed the wage hike, the salary increases, but still managed to increase their margins, aided by better pricing, higher utilization. That said, the constant currency revenue growth, or the growth for Tech Mahindra, has trailed peers this quarter. So on an average, the other large four IT companies have reported about a 4% revenue growth, while Tech Mahindra has reported a 2.9% constant currency revenue growth. The reason is a lower share of revenues coming in from America and a couple of verticals and the fact that they're pruning or you know they're giving up some of the low margin work. So that rationalization of the tail accounts is also hurting the growth metrics. Deal win steady, slightly above that $700 million. BFSI was a bit subdued, as I said, on account of rationalization of the low margin work. Management said they are seeing some signs of slowdown in retail and public sector spending in Europe. CLSA says margin management from here on remains a challenge for the company, but the valuations are inexpensive, which makes um, which is a positive. Uh, valuations for Tech Mahindra are at just 15 times forward multiple FY24. Nomura says Q2 is broadly in line, but the outlook is a bit sketchy. Back to you. All right, that is about Tech Mahindra. Reema, thank you for that. In fact, let us also listen into what Tech Mahindra MD and CEO CP Gurnani had to say on why the IT giant trailed its peers in terms of revenue growth in the quarter gone by. Listen in. I think it is just a way overall Tech Mahindra's product mixes and the geography mixes. From a geography mix, you know that we do about 49% from U.S., whereas most of the peers are at about 70%. Uh, the second part is, uh, from a product mix point of view, uh, there are certain sectors uh, which are right now relatively slower. So I would not see read too much in this particular 2.9% versus 3 point some other percentage, because you have to look at the overall operations have been run very, very beautifully. And uh, when I look at considering that we did a salary increase, we are able to increase in profitability, we are able to uh, become better by 
in DSO days, our free cash flow is one of the best in the recent quarters. Uh, overall, my customer wins. My large deal wins continue to be 700 million plus. I think it has been a good quarter. Okay, all right. That's about Tech Mahindra. But Sun Pharma also reported quarter two earnings during market hours yesterday, which were much better than street estimates. Revenue was in line, while profit and margin beat expectations. Specialty sales were up 27.5% on a year-on-year basis. Here is what MD Dilip Sangvi had to say on the company's earnings conference call. Consolidated sales for the quarter were at rupees 108,092 million, up 13.1 percent year on year. Most of our businesses witnessed good growth, led by global specialty business, India, and emerging markets. For Q2, our global specialty revenues were up. 27.5 percent year on year to about US dollar 201 million. Illumia, Sequa, and Winlevy were the growth drivers for the quarter. Okay, all right, that's about Sun Pharma and Tech Mahindra. But moving on, in its latest review of the windfall gains tax, the government has cut taxes on domestically produced crude to 9,500 rupees per ton from 11,000 rupees a ton earlier. The duty on aviation turbine fuel or ATF exports has been hiked from 3.5 rupees a litre to 5 rupees a litre, while the export duty on diesel has been raised from 12 rupees a litre to 13 rupees a litre. Well, ahead of the crucial G20 meet, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman flags concerns over food security amid supply disruptions in the Black Sea. Speaking to the media on the sidelines of a conference, Finance Minister said G20 members will have to discuss the sanctions against Russia and their spillover. Listen in. Members will have to talk about it. Uh, actions taken at the early stages of the Russia-Ukraine war whether it is a sanction on payment through the SWIFT or subsequently on the fuel trading. Yes, it has moved from one mile post to another. Uh, you hear less of some, you hear more of another. You also have probabilities of newer such things coming in. So these are spillovers of decisions. Those will have to be definitely discussed. You're tuned into Power Breakfast. Well, it's time to talk commodities now. Let's get in Manisha Gupta with all the update. Hey, Manisha, good morning. Morning, Sonal. Thank you for that. Well, I'm looking at the precious metal prices to begin with, with the dollar rally pausing. We've seen gold come back to $1,650 per ounce. The U.S. Fed may hike rates by 75 basis points. That has been factored in. The Reserve Bank of Australia hiked rates by 25 basis points yesterday. And the Bank of England is set to deliver rate hikes today, too. So the gold and silver prices are going to be quite uh, within that storm there. But within metals as well, we have seen gains come back with the U.S. dollar declining and the U.S. factory activity at 50.2, which is better than the street estimate. The copper prices gained 3% overnight. Zinc was up 1%. Nickel gained up by 2% as well. So it has been a good uh, overnight session for the base metal prices also. Good session for the precious metal prices. Manisha, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. Well, the SGX Nifty is still in the red, but absolutely flat as we speak. So we'll have to watch out for the moves out there. For now, we'll take your leave on this edition of Power Breakfast. Bazaar Morning Call comes up next.